Rhett Paladin's got some huge damage buffs, and now people seem to be dusting off their old reroll from Season 1. Meanwhile, there is a heated debate on Reddit about whether it's melee or casters that are ruling the meta. And finally, the healing landscape might be changing, with Resto Druids getting absolutely set on fire with a 5% healing nerf. Anyway, today we will be discussing the biggest class changes and how they might reshape the Season 3 meta. Before we start, be sure to check out skillcap.com. Everything at Skillcap is backed by a rating game guarantee. Yes, we literally promise that you will go up in rating while using our guides, and if you don't, then you shouldn't pay. Visit the links below to get started, but for now, let's get back to the video. Let's kick things off with melee DPS and the one spec that might have been stealth buffed the hardest. Despite getting zero direct changes in recent hotfixes, Outlaw Rogue might be one of the biggest winners. In case you missed it, all plate wearers have had their total armor reduced by 30% in PvP, and since Outlaw is one of the few melee specs that actually deals pure physical damage, this was a pretty big throughput buff. Now, you might be asking, what about those cloth buffs? And while it's true that clothies now have 35% more armor in PvP, it only translates to 0.1 to 3% physical damage reduction, but more on that later. Health pools were also increased across the board for all DPS, which is even more beneficial for Outlaw since they have 15% increased stamina through a spec passive. All in all, if you are a non-plate wearer who deals almost pure physical damage, congratulations, you got buffed in the patch since now you are doing a bit more damage to those plate wearing tanks. Speaking of which, Rhett Paladins were on the receiving end of some pretty big damage buffs to some core abilities. Despite this, we are hesitant to move Rhett Paladin up to the S tier, but are confident in saying they are probably on the high A tier for now. Rhett definitely can have a lot of agency in some lobbies, but can feel really awkward to play with Holy Paladins, which as we will discuss later, have a chance of being the new meta healer from this point on. And with indirect buffs to a lot of casters, Rhett might continue to have some unfriendly lobbies in the near future. Our last significant winner was Survival Hunter, who got a stealthy 4% buff to all damage in the hotfixes, but digging a bit deeper, Survival will also benefit from the plate armor nerfs to some degree, considering roughly half of their damage output is physical. While these buffs aren't enough to pull Survival up to the S tier, they definitely help solidify its position as a high tier melee for Season 3. Not all was up in the melee world, and we do have a few losers from the latest round of hotfixes. As we've mentioned, all plate wearing specs got a small nerf in the patch, since their armor is now less effective inside of PvP. That means Warriors, Paladins, and DKs will all be taking slightly more damage in many melee lobbies. This nerf likely impacted Unholy DK the hardest, since it was joined by a series of damage reductions to three spells inside of PvP combat. And while you might think the stamina increase would help DKs thanks to their increased health pools, remember that more stamina means longer games, and longer games mean higher levels of dampening, which is where DKs tend to feel exceptionally weak, especially as a spec that is a high priority kill target. With that said, we don't expect these nerfs to decimate DK representation, and as a result, they will continue to stay on the A tier for now. The only other melee which is likely to see downward trends in upcoming weeks are sub rogues who will be moving down to the B tier. Not only did the spec receive a 10% damage nerf on Eviscerate, but sub is directly affected by HP increases. Higher stamina values mean the value of burst damage goes down, which is a pretty big deal for a melee spec designed around big burst. It might finally be time to say goodbye to those cheesy shadowy duel kills, at least that's what we hope. We will also be moving Assassination down a tier for today's update. Relative to the two other rogue specs, Asa is definitely weaker defensively, and with the possible resurgence of Rhett Paladins, Asa will have a more difficult time finding win conditions inside Solo Shuffle. That brings us to our updated melee tier list for Season 3. There were a few additional specs who received a mix of buffs and nerfs, including Windwalker, who saw a pretty substantial nerf to their tier set, but are still going to benefit from reduced armor on every plate spec. We're keeping Monks on the S tier, with the key distinction that they are likely worse at lower MMR. Both Warrior specs were also both nerfed and buffed with the hotfixes, trading lower armor for increased healing from impending victory and bigger shields from ignore pain, which both scale off of total HP. Finally, Feral Druid saw a mix of defensive buffs and nerfs, with a healing increase to frenzied regeneration, but then armor nerfs to bear form. Unfortunately for you Feral mains, this probably won't address your core survivability issues, which is why Feral will be staying on the B tier. But now let's move on to range DPS, starting with our biggest winners. First up, all cloth wearing specializations got a 35% armor buff, which results in 0.1% less physical damage taken for warlocks and around 3% for everyone else. On top of this, all fear and root effects now have a higher threshold to damage before breaking, which together mean a slightly easier time dealing with melee for most ranged specs. One of which is Shadow Priest, 
who will be one of the few specs moving up in our rankings. On top of taking slightly less physical damage, Shadow Priest also got a set of key damage buffs, which together we think are enough to bump it up from the C tier. This is one spec we will be monitoring in the coming weeks. While they were extremely good in the early expansion, the spec took some pretty devastating nerfs in 10.2, all thanks to Mythic Plus of all things. Moving on, every Warlock spec will also see a small bump after recent tuning. As the stamina increases are even more beneficial to their defensive kit, buffing the Absorb of Dark Pact and Soul Leech, and increasing the healing done by Mortal Coil. All three Warlock specs are still looking really competitive this season, with Destro arguably having the edge over the other two. While Demo and Affliction are both strong specs in Solo Shuffle, they tend to lack the agency to truly close out games. Without significant burst damage, these specs are heavily reliant on their partners to win the game for them, while they slowly wear down enemy health bars in the background. With that said, the armor buff to Cloth was slightly offset by a retroactive nerf to Demon Skin, which together result in a whopping 0.1% less physical damage taken. Without this nerf, the class would have instead taken 6% less physical damage. Seeing as Warlocks were already quite tanky, this change totally makes sense, at least to non-Warlock mains. Finally, the buffs to Armor and Roots means an obvious win for mages, not to mention the buffs to Ret Paladins, who are typically mage food in most lobbies. So if it wasn't clear by now, Wizards are in a slightly better place in the meta, with Shadow Priest still lagging slightly behind. With our winners sorted, let's move on to the two specs which got slightly nerfed this time around. While it won't be moving down in our rankings, Balanced Druid took a defensive dent, with not one but two separate armor nerfs targeting Moonkin and Bear Form. Balanced Druids already have some of the highest death rates in Solo Shuffle, and although the HP increases might increase some of their self-healing, we could see Balance being slightly worse in the meta. Ellie Shamans are suffering a similar fate with a flat nerf to their total armor. Just like Balanced Druids, Shamans are pretty prone to getting trained by melee in Solo Shuffle. While it might have a lower death rate overall, it is another spec that suffers from a lack of agency in Solo Shuffle, being more reliant on its teammates to close out games. And with that, we have our updated range tier list for Season 3. Although we didn't cover it in our full breakdown, we are still expecting BM to do well in the meta thanks to the plate armor nerfs. As one of the few specs that deals almost pure physical damage, Beast Mastery Hunter should be in a slightly better spot and will still do really well into cloth wearing classes. One spec we might move up to the S tier in the future is Devastation of Ochre. In the past, we might have overplayed the squishiness of this spec, but honestly, Dev can feel like a pseudo tank in some lobbies and obviously does amazing burst damage. This is a spec we are continuing to monitor in the coming weeks. Overall though, not much has changed since our initial predictions. The A tier is pretty stacked, so maybe there is some truth to the argument that we are currently in a caster meta. But we want to know what you think. Who is dominating the meta from your perspective? Let us know in the comments below. And while you're doing that, let's move on to our final role, the hardworking healers of Solo Shuffle. Holy Priest is arguably the best winner from class tuning and will be moving their way to the A tier. After receiving a substantial list of healing and damage buffs, which might even change the default build going forward, one thing worth considering is that Holy Priest Mastery directly scales off of healing done, which means these buffs are even better than the numbers suggest. Right now, simply looking at Holy Priest representation might be a bit misleading, since Disc has been the preferred spec all season. But in the coming weeks, we fully expect Holy Priest stocks to rise across all rating brackets. And despite getting an armor nerf, we're actually moving Holy Paladin up our rankings, joining Resto Druid in the S tier. Paladins are quickly populating the high end of the ladder on both regions, and are even doing well in low and mid-range MMR. Overall, this spec is simply a wall of cooldowns and can carry tremendous momentum at the start of the game with Tears Deliverance. With Druid seeing a few nerfs, the lead Resto had in the meta might be getting slimmer, and Holy Paladin is definitely one healer that can stay competitive into our Broccoli Overlords. But with our winners sorted, let's wrap things up with the only healer to see some losses this time around. Resto Druid received a few different nerfs last Tuesday, including less armor in bear form, weaker mana regeneration, and a flat reduction in healing. It could be argued that the mana nerf is less relevant since Druids also got lower mana costs on some key spells, but doing less healing on all spells with games lasting longer means that mana regeneration is likely going to be a bigger issue going forward. Again, Resto Druids are probably still the best overall healer, but their lead will definitely be shrinking in the coming weeks as new healers start to populate the ladder. That brings us to our updated healer rankings for Dragonflight Season 3. Even though Resto Shaman saw a minor armor nerf and some damage buffs in recent hotfixes, we don't expect them to fall below or above the A tier, and will continue to be one of the strongest healers in the bracket. We will also be moving Preservation up from C to B. The spec saw some buffs in the 10.2.5 patch and now has pretty moderate win rates among healers across all ratings. Alright guys, before we wrap this up, let's tell you a little bit more about Skillcapped. So we offer a 400 rating guarantee, 
and think that's a pretty crazy thing to offer. It's like a gym membership guaranteeing you'll get ripped. Your local gym would go bust if they offered that, right? Not us. We've offered this for years because our service really does work. It works so well, in fact, that we're able to produce by far the largest catalog of WoW PvP guides on the internet. With over 1,200 guides curated into over 300 courses across every class, no one can compare. We also have a growing library of over 1,600 arena commentaries where rank 1 pros and AWC champions teach you how to play your toughest matchups. And if that wasn't enough, skill cap members can also join the premium section of our Discord server where they gain direct contact to our network of pro players. This feature has helped players just like you reach their rating goals. So if you're serious about improving and want to start seeing immediate results, sign up today for as little as $6.99 a month. Anyway guys, that wraps up our tier list update. As always, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.